This is Tommy's Outdoors, episode 25. And this time of the year, um, when winter is coming, um, there is much less sun, the weather is much worse, there is uh, long hours of dark or darkness, pretty miserable weather, low temperature, rain and wind, and um, very often it's just miserable. And this is a time of the year where a lot of people feel depressed. Um, and when we're talking about depression, um, obviously we're talking about well-being, we're talking about the mental health. And um, already on the Tommy's Outdoors blog, there was a blog post um, taking on the subject of how being outdoors and experiencing outdoors can help us and can benefit our health physically, mentally. So um, this is not new subject. And um, in this episode, um, my guest and yours guest is Gronia Clancy. And uh, Gronia, Gronia has a, uh, many years of experience as a, as a nurse and many years of experience working with people who need help and who feel depressed and uh, really uh, need, need really help. Um, so I thought it would be a great idea um, to invite Gronia to the podcast and uh, talk about outdoors and how outdoors can help in uh, improving mental health, how being outdoors can improve in uh, lifting up the mood and um, overall feel better. So uh, I think it's an important episode and uh, and it's, you know, just in the right time of the year. Um, so without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Gronia Clancy. Gronia Clancy. Yes. Thank you for accepting invitation for the podcast. Oh, thank podcast. you for having me. Oh, it's great. We are in uh, sunny Dublin today again. We are, yes. Yeah. And uh, I suppose today's episode of the podcast is not going to be like a, you know, the usual. We're gonna we're gonna be more general, and we're gonna talk about how good outdoors is, is how good it is for us to be outdoors, and all the benefits of that. So before we start, maybe uh, give our listeners a little bit of a background. What is that you do and, and where? Okay, so I um, work as a counselor psychotherapist. I'm in private practice in Dublin and Monkstown. And I've been doing that for the last few years. And before that, I worked in nursing and 26 years all together between nursing and social care. So worked in a variety hospital, nursing home, residential, um, social care as well. Right. And you can probably, people get confused with the accent sometimes. I'm originally from County Antrim, so yeah. I grew up just outside Belfast in the Troubles, in the height of the Troubles. So yeah, yeah. so an interesting and very life. But I also trained in Scotland, so the accent can change from time to time. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> And so, t tell me, do you do you in your in your practice and in your with your experience, have you seen and ex and, and and kind of witnessed how the being outdoors helps people and improves their mental health and and is it is it common thing? I think I know with clients like in Monkstown, I'm right beside the sea, so they'll sometimes go for a walk before the session or maybe after the session. And I know, and I know myself as well. But it's really soothing being by the sea. Mm. And I think because we're made of water, you know, between seventy and ninety percent of our body is made of water, and the sea is water. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so vast, but there's a really calming can be a really calming effect on the sea, regardless of the weather. Whether the wind is throwing the the, yeah, you know the the wind, the sea up, and the waves are like crashing all over the place. Yeah, it just has really profound effect, you know, yeah. on our or if it can also if you know 
bring up feelings of sometimes people are numb mm-hmm. and they don't really know how they're feeling. And sometimes being by the sea can really bring up those feelings of, you know, bring them to the fore. Right, right. I, 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 I couldn't agree more because like a, even sound of the water, whether it's at the lake or it's at the sea or is it the river, you know, the sound of the water that it, it, it you have this calming effect and, and kind of like, you know, all that noisy kind of life dissolves and you kind of yeah, can stay and, in the moment. Yeah, because so many, like even um, like breathing, if you think of the tide coming in and counting mm-hmm. for seven and going out and counting for seven with your breathing, mm-hmm. you know, it's so, it's mindfulness, but it's just, yeah, it's just amazing. So, yeah. We have inbuilt within us ways of calming ourselves down, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's just really powerful being outdoors. And I think as well, when you live and you work in a city and it's very, there's people everywhere and the noise levels and getting to Wicklow, my favourite, um, one of my favourite go-to places um, to kind of chill out um, for a coffee and just sit and look at the countryside and, and driving around it, it's just amazing and the greenery and the energy that we get from trees yeah because there was a program earlier this year and trees are very social like you never see a tree Mm -hmm. on its own yeah but and they all communicate with each other they can communicate through the through the chemical signals or something i watched this this program once that they if one of the trees gets attacked by the insect or something Uh like that then other trees who are not attacked yet start uh, kind of uh, producing the chemicals to deter those insects because clearly those other trees are able to communicate in some way with the rest of the trees. So yeah. we think that like, well, it, it, there's actually a surprising amount of communication going on between the plants in general. Yeah, trees. which is, you know, Mother Nature. So it's just remarkable. And I think nature can teach us so much. Yeah. So, so much. You know, you can, you see... Um, you know, the sun going, like the weather forecast, like sometimes, mm. all the time, th- you know, they can get it wrong. Um, yeah. But you can look at the sky and you know, yes, it's going to rain. Well, maybe there's a chance of rain, but the sea, and you'll see it, you know, because I live so close to sea, I can see, oh, it's gone, but it's very mm-hmm. calm, it's clear, good weather's on the way, or mm-hmm. it gets choppy, oh, there's a change on the way. So the sea tells us a, a phenomenal amount of information. Yeah. And listen, so so you say that you you did see effects for on people, like yeah. being outdoors, on healing and kind of relaxing, and and it's it's interesting. There's so many things that I like I would like to ask you about because yeah, well, there's ahead. there's there's many like first of all, what you touched on is living in the city, and and all the you know people, lots of people, high speed type of life. And um, and I noticed so so I have a I come originally from the city right I was born and raised in the city mm-hmm. and then and then I moved to another city Warsaw which is the biggest city in, in the capital of Poland and um, so that was that was fine uh, and and it was one of the things when I you know in Ireland kind of this rural setting but I digress what I noticed. When you're coming from the city to the place somewhere in some rural area, like, for example, our friend is running Fishing Lodge uh, in County Cork Mm -hmm. by the lake. And you drive down there, you step out of the car, and you momentarily, like, calm, like, everything, like, ah. Yeah. Right? And and those people are kind of speaking different. They're more relaxed. Mm-hmm. They're speaking slower. The, everything yes. is like like in a slower, more natural pace. Yes. It's it's so nice. You can you can see like you, you you landed in a different place. Yeah. And I think that our environment has unbelievable effect on us. You know, and especially particularly and it affects everybody. But if you're sensitive and you're picking up all the energies that are around and energies of other people, the city's a crazy place. Because, yeah. you, you know, if you're empath- really an empath and you're walking around and you could go from, you know, being really calm, really chill, and you might get angry, you might get upset because you're picking up other people's energies. That's very interesting what you said. That's very interesting what you said. 
Because another thing that I, that I want to point out, or is it maybe not point out, but it's my observation, that only when I start living in the rural area, maybe not, maybe I'm going to take it back. When I start living in the rural area and then visited the city, mm-hmm. whether it was for a conference or whether it was like visiting back in home or whatever else, I start to notice how destructive environment for humans the city is. Mm-hmm. And and that's a statement that some of my friends were kind of making big eyes and were like, you know, and, and I, I totally understand that because, um, you know, like 10 years ago, I wouldn't probably say that. But it's, I even observe that when you go in a city, you, you immediately see, see so many people that you and to your point of picking up it that something is wrong with with them it's like something is something is not right there you cannot even you know put the words exactly about what is wrong right but you have these people coming and they're like act a little weird like something is but i think what's happening is life is so fast you know when I was growing up, there used to be a term keeping up with the Joneses mm. and maybe a better term now would be keeping up with the Kardashians mm. because it's like, well, half, the world is very materialistic. If you look at the shops at the weekends, what do people do? They go to shops. They go shopping every weekend. Not, every, not all the people. <laughs> not all the people. Or they go window. No, not all the people. But like Dundrum and, and the city centre, mm-hmm. it's crazy at the weekends. Because people are right now, they might be just going out for a coffee or whatever. Or they might be window shopping, you know. But that's kind of that sense that, you know, people are are trying to keep up with, you know, oh, if I have this, you know, if I have this, I will be happy. It's a rat race. It's a rat, that's it, exactly. But it's learning. It's learning one one that you can pick up on that energy from others. Mm. And there is ways of protecting Mm. yourself, you know. Without a doubt, there's 100% ways of right. protecting yourself um, okay. against that. But it's being aware of that, of being aware that, that you are picking up other people's energies. Yeah. So you, so you, do you agree that the city is destructive for, for people's mind? Or you not, it's not that simple? I don't think it's as simple as that. Okay. I think it can be. I think, but cities, I think, as well are amazing. Like Dublin city centre... There is so much to see. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much history in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it it can be destructive, but it's being aware of how how it is destructive, the mm-hmm. impact that ha- it has on you as an individual. Yeah, yeah. Is it is it because um, really it requires per- certain mindfulness or tactic to survive in that environment because. I think that to your point of of keeping up with the Joneses uh, or Kardashians, for that matter, it, it the people kind of can easily fall into that groove when they're in the city. Yeah. Because sometimes, even when you're in a rural setting, you have well, what you're gonna do? You're gonna go outside. You're gonna hear the birds chirping yes. and, and whatever. While in a city, what you're gonna do? You're gonna turn on the TV, or you go to a shopping mall. Right, and then you get bombarded by all those pictures, right? Pictures of wealth and happiness and all that. Yeah. And if you don't kind of, you're not conscious of, of it. You kind of get your kind of ape brain wanting, you know, the yeah. next thing, right? So. And 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 the you know, there's so many messages of advertising of this is what you should have. I think television is a lot easier now. Like there used to be the advertisements, but nobody watches advertisements now. Mm-hmm. You know, they flick forward on their television. Mm-hmm. But advertising is everywhere. Mm-hmm. But it's so subtle that we don't realize it. And they're very clever. Mm-hmm. You know, they un- they understand how we work. How, like music, they have shown that certain types of music, if they play slower music in, in say, a shop, in a particular shop or whatever, it slows you down. Mm-hmm. Whereas if it's fast, then you'll speed up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there, there's so many subtle ways that they do that. So I think it's about learning, you know, because that's what everyone's after. Everyone's after. They want to be happy. Every mm-hmm. single person, that's what they want. And they think, if if I have this, 
then I'll be happy. <laughs> You know, but yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't that work that ends. way. That it never, never ends. ends. You need to do this one more thing always. Yes, and that's I suppose that's where dreams come in, and they're so important that we all have hope that you know that things will move forward and, and that. But it's not it's, at the end of the day. It's about relationships. It's about the connection with yourself, your relationship with yourself, and your relationship with everybody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And uh, so you mentioned that there are there are certain ways of surviving that environment, or kind of uh, what would what would you can you uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Um, I would say the most important thing is is looking at how you're feeling, checking in with yourself. <laughs> you know, really regularly checking in with yourself and seeing how you're feeling. How did you start off the day? You know, and did something change? Well, why did it change? I suppose in a way that's what therapy is about. But it's about knowing yourself and it's about checking in and thinking, I'm happy. Or I wasn't happy. Or my mood changed. Why did my mood change? You know, was it Mm -hmm. something, was there something there that reminded you of something that that hurt you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, So that's the number one thing. And it's about letting go and, and what's mine and what's yours, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's interesting because that's a that's a quite known technique. Some sometimes in like in leadership it's called detach, which which allows you to to better understand what's going on. Yeah. With yourself but also with the environment. Like for example, you're you're let's say you're in a meeting. And the meeting goes sideways. People start, you know, disagreeing with each other and so on. And the worst thing is like you jump right into it. You're not seeing what's happening. So you kind of detach, step back mentally. Yeah. All right. What's going on here? Yeah. And then it's like, like, you know, okay, I see what's happening. And then you can act. And like you're saying, it's exactly the same thing apply to yourself. And I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah. But it's a, it's, it's. It's a really useful tool, but it takes time mm-hmm. to learn to do that. And mm-hmm. it's like practice. It's like, you know, say running a marathon, you're not going to go decide one day, oh, I'm going to do that marathon of 25 kilometers. Mm-hmm. And you go and you do it. Mm-hmm. That's not feasible. You start slowly and mm-hmm. you think, right, okay, I'll start running maybe 500 meters. And you, and you build it up mm-hmm. over time. Well, the same with your brain. Your brain's at the end of the day, your brain is a muscle. Yeah. Very powerful one. I think they're probably the most powerful computer that will yeah. ever exist. Yeah. Um, so it's about training yourself. Yes. And do you think that in that sort of uh let's let's yeah, like you said, like kind of detaching and, and looking out, do you think that um being outdoors and the outdoor setting can can help in any way yeah. in, in training that yeah. house? I think being with nature, slowing down. Mm. You know, the great thing about Dublin City Centre, they have lots of parks. I'm su- I was surprised. There's 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 a lot of green places. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot. So, uh, Marion Square near where I work um, is wonderful to walk through. And I remember one day, I love I love art. I love pictures. And I thought, well, I call into the art gallery, and I thought, no, no, just just go into the into the park and I went into the park and next thing I look around and there's all these artists painting <laughs> I was like wow and I, I went over and I said can I have a look and so I walked through the park so you never know what to expect but you have the trees you have the greenery and it definitely it it's soothe it's self soothing is what it basically does is it slows you down but it's about taking your time. It's about looking around you. What do you hear? What do you see? So using all your senses, what do you smell? Using all your senses to be aware of your environment. Right. And this is, the, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, like everything that you're saying makes makes total sense to me. And especially when you kind of in a, you know, day-to-day city life corporate la- life and you know s- where everything is you know s- s- at speed happens yeah. at speed and that you know big volume let's say um that's it is it's almost like a perception like a time slows down 
You and know, it could only be five. It could be five minutes. It could be a minute. Like even taking a minute to, um, just sit for a mm-hmm. minute and do nothing. It really can be quite difficult. To I, do. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. That, that sometimes it's, it's difficult. Like what? I'm not, not doing anything. Yeah. Why is that difficult? Because we're always. But I think information. We're in the information overload. Oh. Um century you know that that at the flick you're wondering something well that's you know even like 10 15 years ago the term google it you mm-hmm. know we yeah. wouldn't have used that term yeah exactly uh, and, exactly and, and that's what it is is that it's so much information um for us i've forgotten the question now that you're asking no it was no there, there wasn't a question really we, we were we were just we were just talking about you know kind of stepping outside and, and slowing down. Oh, slowing down, yeah. yeah. So, know. yeah, so mobile phones are the most amazing. Like, I think back to, like, a cassette. Do you remember the cassettes? Of course I do. And, and like, how many songs could you get on a cassette? Can you maybe get, maybe, you know, if you're recording off the radio. Which there was there was always not enough a cassette, and you no. always have a last song <laughs> that was cut off. Yes. And, <laughs> or you were leaving a little bit of the tape unused. Yes. And it was like, damn it, I, I might use it for something. <laughs> yes. But the, f- the size of that, we can video people, and we can talk to them on the other side of the world. We can check information, we can listen to music, we can, you know, listen to people talking about a million different things. It's just, you know, it's fantastic. But we're so used to it, that's was that's what it was. It was about how there's so much information that we're not used to being bored. Mm. It's actually really healthy. Ah yes. That's very like very impor- very important subject you touched on. People are afraid sometimes, like they're not used to like sitting. Is sitting? Yeah, or even just going for a walk with your sitting by the sea for five mm-hmm. minutes, mm-hmm. watching the sea, checking the watch or the mobile. Have to go. <laughs> Hell, why? What's the race? Are people never switching their mobile phones off? Well, what if somebody phones me? I miss a phone call. Or this important notification on Twitter. Someone liked my post. Yeah. I need to know that. Yeah, I need to know <laughs> and I need to see how many followers I have on Twitter <laughs> and what's happening. And it is. It's. I remember the first time I was on holiday and I, I, for, I left a charger somewhere else and so I had no way of charging my mobile. And I was, I was like, first of all, I got really anxious. Like, what if something happens? And I thought, you know what? Well, you know, I'll get you. There's an an- if it's really important, there is an answer machine on my phone. So, you know, so eventually yeah. I got, you know, there was messages for me. But, you know, if somebody really needs to get hold of you, there is ways and means. Before mobile phones, they were always mm-hmm. able to get people. Yeah, you exactly. know, so exactly. yeah, that's, so that's that's very uh, you know, my my father is like how I I think I wonder how many of the listeners of the podcast know what the you know the compact cassette still remembers compact cassette yeah um so we exposing ourselves are slightly old <laughs> um so that's one thing but then again you know the your point that we're not getting used to being bored um yeah that's there there's a couple of points on that one that we probably as human beings as as you know human animal not used to processing this much information all the time i i I think this is this is one of the things and like you said between being bombarded by all the advertisement and not even advertisement just the sheer volume of things that are happening around you especially when you're in the city cars are going people are walking you know something is flashing and blinking and all and all that and then we have we we kind of escape into the phone or into the computer. Yeah. And guess what? There's more of the same. Yes. And it is like our brain never have break. No. There's no rest. And then another thing, sleep deprivation, which is caused by that, right? The screen on the phone or on the computer, a lot of blue light em- 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 emitting blue light into our eyes. For our brain is like, whoa, there's a you know sunlight, there's a day. I yeah. shouldn't go to sleep. Yeah. So the brain is awake. Then you go to sleep way too late. 
you can't sleep properly, and then you wake up in the morning, and guess what? You're off to the race again, yeah. right? But even before I, you I got to dance. Yeah, and you know what? I suppose that you help me. You just help me now to kind of express what I mean by city being destructive. This is exactly what I said. Because then when you go to like, again, I'm going to bring the example of that fishing lodge or, or yeah. you know, in other locations. You know, like when the sun is down and, you know, you're not going to go fishing. You're not going to, you know, you may sit next to the barbecue, listen to the grill and then yeah. you go to sleep and there's a quiet and you sleep and you're like, much better setting. Right? Yeah. And that's the thing, like, like a mobile phones, and in particular for people that are very sensitive, having the, like the energy that's produced by charging the battery beside your bed. So mm. I've said so many times, clients, get rid of it out of your, out of your bedroom, do you know, get an alarm clock. Because <laughs> actually listening to an al- alarm clock ticking, it's actually quite soothing. Oh, you mean like an old school clock? Old school clock, ah, that's yeah. A good, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. But th- it has this alarm sound, like you momentarily you sleep and then you're standing up. There's no, <laughs> nothing in between. <laughs> yeah, but but it, it definitely has a huge impact. And like the internet is wonderful because like we met, you know, we met online. So and yeah. now we're sitting here together. Yeah. So like it's amazing but put it away like when I go on holiday I have, I have two phones I have my work mm. phone and my personal phone and I leave my work phone behind now mm. is there a little bit of apprehension mm. well yeah so I change my voicemail mm. I che- you know I say oh I'm on holiday and I will I will get back to you mm-hmm. but yeah there, there is a little bit of apprehension but yeah I'm not around so mm. I say so yeah and and there's even I remember I was reading a book which um and this is this these are really like a biological adaptation that our brain requires that downtime, that boredom, in order to learn, in order kind of to process some skills and information acquired during the day. Yeah, like stepping back, as you said, that mm. stepping back, like you would if you're at say a meeting, wondering what's going on. Mm. Yeah, for a chance to dream, sleep is so so important. You know. Um, I think if 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 people got a good night's sleep, I wonder how much stress and anxiety would be reduced in this world, and how, would I be as busy as I am if yeah. everyone got a good night's sleep? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you know what? This is this is another point uh, that you that you mentioned about checking all your notifications and all that stuff, right? And this is this unconscious kind of um, that something will happen. Right, I'm gonna miss something. Something is like, oh my god, right? Some something is gonna happen, and and this is this is this like to let go. It's it's fine, and and I, again, I sometimes see it in a in in work at work where people are, you know, oh, I need this, this, this you know, like I'm sick, but I cannot leave, you know, and then they they're they're coming to office, you know, sick or whatever. It's like, no, listen, stay at home, get better. No, but like like look, nothing gonna happen. The world doesn't doesn't gonna stop. Right. And um and I think that's another thing that being outdoors and observing in nature kind of teaches us that thing, right? Nothing will happen. The world will kind of continue. Mm-hmm. Even if you miss that very important, you know, like on Facebook. Yeah, it, it all always works out. And I, yeah, and people going into work, like I know for a lot of people, if they don't go to work, they don't get paid. And so they go in and get sent home sick, which is so wrong. But it's not just because it affects affects everyone. If ever, somebody's got a cold and, and you go into an yeah. office, then everyone else is going to have it as oh. well. Yeah. And so, you have this air conditioning that would then gonna yeah. circulate that nicely to the entire building. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's you know, if you're sick, your body's telling you something. So listen to your body. Slow mm-hmm. down. You've maybe been doing too much. So slow down. Like I'm very, I would be very aware of um, self care because mm-hmm. I, as a nurse, I mm-hmm. burnt out twice in nursing. Mm-hmm. So I'm very aware of the importance of minding yourself and looking after yourself Mm. because if you don't then you are going to and and it's learning to say no and that's where nature really does come in because it does it slows you down yeah 
And you might realize, actually, I'm really tired. <laughs> I need a breather. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here for 10 minutes. And, mm-hmm. and even building it up, you know, starting with a minute mm-hmm. and building up to 10 minutes. Like I said, you know, I saw people recently on, on, on Facebook and they were really busy. And, I, you know, they were extremely busy. They worked full time, mm-hmm. children. People are really busy. Well, just take a minute, even if that's a minute sitting on the toilet doing nothing, you know. But that might be the only space place they get some peace, or spend an extra minute in the shower just letting the water. Yeah, you know. And that's why, like, all the activities outdoors are so good because, you know, even when you're, when you're, you know, you're angling, you're, you know, you're looking at your float or you're waiting for fish to bite and you're just waiting there, right? Or, or another example is when you're running or cycling. And um, I was even talking about, about this in one of the episodes of the podcast already, but it's like, a, you know, you were cycling for like six hours or eight hours, right? Mm-hmm. Like a big spin. And uh, people are asking you, what you been thinking about for eight hours? They're like, nothing. And just you're just cycling for it's it's like this state of meditation well it is because you're so focused and same with driving you're so focused on what you're doing you're focusing on you know you're constantly searching you know looking around you which we do automatically like every single one of us searches to see is it safe do i hear a car come like from the cyclist Mm -hmm. do i hear a car coming do I hear pedestrians? Do you know, mm-hmm. is there another car coming? Especially if it's an arrow. Mm. <laughs> you know, so all of those things. So you're constantly searching for danger. That's the way our bodies are designed. That's our that's mm. our flight or fright or mm. you know the stress response that we have in our bodies. Yeah. So I heard know, the expression "state of flow." State of flow is a nice way of putting it. Okay, okay. Did you hear that expression? No, I've never heard no, that I expression. I only before. heard it once. Like this is state of flow, and like okay, what what you the you don't even remember, like, whoa, you were doing something for eight hours, and it just like feels like nothing. Yeah, it's like people driving to work. They, they think they they can't recall the journey, mm-hmm. you know, because they're doing it all the time. Exactly. Yeah, you're you're saying exactly the same thing. You know, sometimes you're cycling and you're all of a sudden like, did I already pass that that thing that building? And it's like I can't remember. And yeah. you're like, is it something wrong with me? Right, no. is my memory goes. <laughs> no, you're just so focused on, on, on the driving. And like I drive with like all the time, drive with music and I, I I can't really I'm not a singer, but I love singing in the car, yeah. you know, because it's so good because you're fo- you're totally focused on the road, but you're singing as well. It's just mm. it's just the best feeling in the world. Yeah. And did you ever say to someone to one of your one of your um I don't know what the word is, clients or patients? Clients. Clients. If you if you ever say like, well, did, did you ever recommend it to go outdoors and take on some outdoors activities? So, you know, you, you, you talk to that person and you think to yourself, well, that guy clearly needs to go out and, you know, sit in the woods for a day or... It's interesting that most clients I'm thinking, I don't think I have with... Don't recall, them, but most of my clients would would be pretty active. Oh, you know, I don't think there's any that. Is it know. not contradiction that they should that they, you know they're they're they, I would expect that most of them are, you know, kind of stressed city people that you need to kind of send them out somewhere. But they, that's the thing, they're stressed city people because maybe they don't stop. <laughs> okay, you know okay. so they do like they they maybe do go to the gym or they do go for walks mm-hmm. but equally they're constantly on the go yeah and so it's too much so like everything is everything in moderation yeah so it's about you know slowing down yeah so it's good to be active but it's also good to kind of right, you know right. take your time as well so that, okay. that happy medium but it's not as straightforward, like stress and anxiety are not as straightforward as saying, you know, if you keep active, you go walking. Because mm. life can get in the way. And I suppose sometimes it's easier to talk to a stranger. Mm. You know, sometimes my hairdresser would know, like in general, you would tell your hairdresser far more than maybe you would tell, mm. you know, close friend, you know, friends that you, well, not close friends, but some friends that you have that they wouldn't yeah. know. Um 
Well, it's just, you know, I provide that safe, that confidential space where mm. they get to be themselves, you know, they're themselves and they would know a little bit about me, but they wouldn't mm-hmm. know that much about me. So I'm kind of this sure, sure. empty space reflecting back to them sure. and, and giving them tips of what to do. But yeah, yeah, you know. And listen, so can you clarify? Um, because on one hand, we are saying that being, you know, active and in the nature and you know you're running you're cycling you're you're doing gives you puts you in that state of flow or that state state of kind of meditation and your brain kind of relaxes and like your what i'm saying like your conscious brain kind of switches off and all you go by the instinct you know by this yeah this, so that's good right yeah that's, that's what you need but at the same time you're saying that you have a lot of people who who are doing these things they are active but the same but some something doesn't work for them right it's yeah. like so so is there a wrong way of going about walk or cycle or something that's supposed to help you <laughs> and you doing something wrong is can you go wrong with that i think it's a million dollar question and i think it it's very much dependent on the individual and like and i can't say you know, I can't say that for one person, yeah, but I think, like, some people do get, you know, you do get a buzz of adrenaline, let's say you're, you're racing, or you're, you know, or you're cycling, and you get onto, you, you know, you get onto your fastest time, so you get a shot of adrenaline, so I think there is people that are addicted to exercise because it gives them that yeah. really good feeling, mm-hmm. but I can't say, you know, this is what, I think it everyone's different you know there's none no one of us same oscar wilde says Mm. be yourself because everybody else is taken and that (laughs) is so true yeah you know it's so so true because every single one of us are individuals if you look at your family where you you know are is there similarities yes of course they are but we're all individuals Mm -hmm. because our culture you know our culture is different you know for every single person because they all have unique experiences yeah yeah and you know you're right um there is one thing that i probably already spoken about on the on the podcast but um i think there is a good point good time now to bring it up again um i was um i uh there was a there was an episode of another podcast not tommy saldor's podcast episode of another podcast where i was talking about a hobby that is not fun for you anymore Right. And the example I gave multiple examples that I kind of witnessed myself among my friends. And one of the is that your time, your best time in cycling or you need to catch that biggest fish or the fish that is bigger than your friend. And what is happening, you're turning your hobby or something that you're doing to relax, to detach, you're turning that into another job. You're being competitive. Yes. It's your another job. Like it's it's really crappy weather and i don't want to go but i'm going to go anyway and train because i want you know, and and again the balance is important because mm-hmm. you know i i am all all for discipline and to a large extent i admire people who like for in that example for cycling right there's a winter day there's a rain lashing rain and but they go out and they're mm-hmm. cycle because the race gonna be in these conditions or it might be conditions like that during the race mm-hmm. so they kind of toughen it out and go and do it i admire that um but at the same time if that's something you're doing for relaxing well you better make sure you're relaxing while you're doing that yeah. do you still really want to do it because I, I, I had a, I had a friend who like is like even myself, you know. I was and there's a couple of episodes on the podcast where I was talking. I had like a mad, I think three years shark fishing. I was doing like a almost trip every weekend uh, in the shark season, which you know you go in the boat out of the sea. You know, it's the offshore fishing. It was a and uh, after these three years, I just found out it's not fun for me anymore, and I stopped. I stopped. I hasn't. I haven't been shark and what, fishing what, since. And what, and what was it that stopped being fun for you? 
Well, the the overall, the, I think that the overall experience, you know, because I've done so many of those trips, and, and I I I caught big sharks. I I made friends. I um, you know, know everything I wanted to know. So that become kind of repetitive. So you reached your goal. I read well, yes, to some extent, but I think that uh, the um, inconveniences start to outweigh what I was taking out of that. Because you know, you wake up early, you're driving down, you're on a boat. The weather we have in Ireland, we all know, right? So the <laughs> sea is choppy. Yeah. So you you gotta hold on to to the boat. It's 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 not by any stretch. It's usually not an easy ride. You know five even or or 15 miles offshore mm -hmm. and then you have all the bait for the sharks which is a rotten fish and it smell awful and you know you're you're in the setting so if you look at it it's not it's no fun why would anyone want to do it and you get freeze and cold and soaked to the skin and, yes thank you thank you exactly so as long as what i was getting out of that were outweighing and it was outweighing tenfold or any of that it was yeah. it was even like oh you know it's a bad weather great we see how we get on on the bad weather right but then so was this competitiveness that you wanted to get it was almost like you wanted to beat yeah i can survive through whatever weather you want at me i will get through this i will not like kind you. of kind of curiosity i would yeah. say more more than competitive i would say like curiosity okay how is, how is, i i think like you know i i, I never understood like i i know there's a competitive aspect in fishing or angling but I, I was never kind of into that it was more of a kind of curiosity and then like okay i've i ticked enough boxes and you know i i kind of realized one day you know walking to my wardrobe in the morning and saying like oh my god you know i'm gonna be doing that again and then the next thought is like, well, look, you wake up, you pay this this much money for a charter boat, you're driving down, you're all that, and if it's no fun for you, why would you do it? Yeah. Right. And and I I stop. And you know, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna go for for another shark trip, you know, sometime, maybe with friends, maybe you know something in some setting, but uh, it has to it has to be fun. It yeah. Be. So I I kind kind of understand that piece. Yeah, so I think as well, I was when you were talking about that, it made me realize that actually, you know, people wanting to be the best. Mm. You know, everyone's like, you know, students as well, you know, it's wanting not to pass, it's wanting to get the best marks and maybe getting an A or an A star and being disappointed mm. if they don't get an A star. Yeah. You know, I think there's that... You see it like it's very I know also obvious. other kind of students who just want to go high enough to to pass, and that's it. yeah. <laughs> but I think that for a lot of people, it's like like here in Dublin, they talk about going. Well, they are colleges like UCD, TCD. They're colleges, but they're universities. Everyone calls them colleges, mm -hmm. you know. And I wonder is that because kind of down playing, it's you know, it's a big deal to get to university, mm -hmm. but. It seems for a lot of people that it's kind of a rite of passage, and yet we have all these tradesmen, like we have electricians, plumbers, etc., mm -hmm. that there's not enough of, you know, because nobody that's, is training. Oh, that's 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 another that's another thing. That's another thing. Yeah, yeah, and you know, that's this again interesting thing because a lot of these jobs are the jobs that are being done outdoors. Yeah, I was even I, you know I was even thinking that. Because the podcast is about the outdoors, yeah, I would like to, and maybe someone is listening to that right now. So if you're a worker who works outdoors, being in the road maintenance, right, or anything else. Other cranes. Yes. I would love to have you on the podcast. Yeah. Because that's outdoors, and, yeah. and, and you know. And do you think? Do you have any experience with that? Do you think that these people who work outdoors, they have like a different kind of attitude or more relaxed or anything i think people that are gardeners you know or work with <sighs> plants definitely i think you you can see they have a very different because back to nature nature teaches us so much teaches us about life 
Mm -hmm. Um, It teaches us about death. And what's really interesting is that Carl Rogers, who's, you know, considered the father of modern day counselling, he would describe having, you know, the the ideal conditions um, for a plant to grow. He, Mm -hmm. he, his father was a farmer and so Mm -hmm. he learned how to, to grow things. And that's what he would talk about of having that space, you know, the perfect conditions for someone to grow. Yeah. And he, he akined it to a plant. Yeah. You know, and it having the right conditions. And we're just like plants. We need the right conditions to grow and flourish. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, but farmers, there are at least, the, you know, the, a lot of farmers who are dealing with the plants and kind of, you know, not like dairy farmers. But I think that the stress levels among farmers are quite high, actually. Yeah. They're not kind of relaxed bunch. How Look. How that happens? I think that's a lot to do with um, supermarkets oh. and undercutting mm. a lot of um, undercutting them for their prices. So they'll say, well, we're only going to give you this and mass mass production. So like animals are, are you know, they're milk, like cows are milk so, so much, mm. you know. So I think that's got a lot to do with it. Um, the whole economics of it all, I yeah. know, I I don't know. Yeah, you but know, I suppose what you're saying is that this, that the the aspect of outdoors is like a minuscule compared to you know business aspect, which are as other jobs or or even more difficult because you're actually dealing with the outdoors. Yeah, and do you think that also something I I wanted to ask you uh, uh, today was. Do you think that being people who are spending more time outdoors and taking outdoors activity, they're mentally tougher? Because you need to overcome a lot of, well, adversity, right? Mm-hmm. Even on the shark trip, you, you, being, you, know, you being on the boat at sea with the wind and everything else, or you know, you're freezing on the hill when, you, when you're stalking deer, or you cycling for you know, 200 kilometers and you need to you know, withstand the pain. So that, that, that's tough. Sometimes outdoors activities are tough. Would you say that this kind of teaches people mental toughness and, and their, their kind resilience. of resilience are kind of tougher like that? I never thought of that before. I would say in some ways, yeah, because, you know, say, you know, I have friends that, that regularly climb um, the Dublin Mountains mm-hmm. and there is that aspect of pain, of going through that pain and I'm thinking, oh, I'm never going to get to the top of this mountain. And mm-hmm. then they do. The overcoming they adversity. They overcome the adversity. And I think, yeah, so again, they're they're teaching themselves that, yeah, when, when life gets tough, Yes, I will get through this. Mm, exactly. You know, because you know, I've climbed the I've climbed the mountain or I've overcame this obstacle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I th- I think so because uh, in general, you know, I think that that as a society and maybe, you know, especially people in the city, we become very weak. I have that 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 feeling of that we are very weak and that and you probably know better than anyone else that there is a lot of people who who need help. And I feel like this is because overall we just have too easy. We have, you know, everything by the reach of the hand. I just reached for the remote or for my phone mm-hmm. or my food is in the supermarket ready to go or I don't even have to cook it. I just, I just put it in a, you know, microwave or whatever. We just have so easy and we fundamentally build to overcome adversity and we lacking adversity. So then, when in a, in a life in, in in a life of people, there is a little bit of red tape. All of a sudden, happening here and there, that's being perceived as a, like a major problem, like a major obstacle. And like, well, that's not problem, you know. I'm just just gonna move on. I think people that have had it, you know, easy, and you know, I hate using that word because I mm-hmm. think every single. You know, we we never know. You know that mm. old saying: "You never know what goes mm. on behind closed doors." Mm. We never know what an environment we can look. And if we judge, I think mm. if we judge people and say, "Oh, well, I think," but 
we really you know that saying mm -hmm. walk another man's shoes or another man's moccasins mm -hmm. we we really don't know what it's like for them mm -hmm. so i think it's kind of easy easy to say well yeah this is how yes of course people that have had it tougher when mm. they're younger develop resilience yeah. but not always you know sometimes they they they're there's this and you know, people talk about being survivors or some people type people are victims but they're all labels you know i mm -hmm. think they're all, and i don't think a single one of us should judge mm -hmm. another person because we we don't know what's going on in their heads mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know so yeah. got it yeah so that's so, so i don't know is you, you 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 don't agree with that that kind of working towards adversities kind of make you more resilient overall so yes so of course let's, let's, they do of course they do okay. but yes if you've had yes but again it's down to that individual yeah and i think you really I, you can't say you can't make a blanket term about it oh uh, uh, yeah because everybody is different yeah and everybody like so listen so this is maybe maybe different. do you know do you have any you know pre you know, development of all the, you know, city life and the cell phones and all that. Are the levels of people with anxiety and depression, was it lower or higher? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it fair statement that, you know, our modern lifestyle and detachment from the nature, because we're becoming detached from the nature, kind of is driving these, these factors up? The answer is I don't know, but I do mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. in the Western world, like the number one cause of sickness today is depression. So stress, anxiety, <laughs> depression. That's the main reason people are going off work sick. Right. It's not anything else. It's, it's the number one cause of disability mm. today. That's the World Health Organization have, have stated that. So... Oh. I don't know if there's a difference. I remember research being done. Um, it was announced on the radio a few years that, you know, being surrounded by trees had an impact on us and that there was mm -hmm. more trees on the south side of Dublin than there was on the north side. And that had an impact on people, I think, education level. But again, I th wow. nothing, is, nothing is as simple as that. Yeah. So, so the correlation like that? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, but I think that's very simplified. Yeah, but yeah, of course, the in, each individual is different. There's there's no doubt there's no doubt about it. And, and to your point that you know you don't really know what's happening behind the scenes, but there are some you know some frame of of like in general right generalization. Um, I think that, like the example that you gave with the with the trees and and all of that, yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I think people that live by the sea, you know, so mm -hmm. is there a difference? Yeah, possibly. I love it. I love it. I live by the sea myself. Yeah, just to hear the birds in, in at the beach in the morning. Yeah, like, wow. Even to see it, you know, so I I wouldn't be so close that I can see it. But I would go, you know, I, I enjoy Sea Point is a, mm -hmm. an amazing place to go to. Um, recharge your batteries and it really does recharge your batteries that's, that's, that's great you know and I'm super enjoying that conversation because it's not like a one one easy answer right we would we would like to have a one if, easy answer yeah so. if life was easy there would be instructions and rules and and there's not you yeah. know there, there's there's a lot of uncertainty about about life and you know what do you want from life how do you be how are you going to be happy and there yes there's things that help but if it was easy and it was straightforward there would be a book but then it would make it very yeah. boring because it would have all the rules yeah. you know so Sorry. yeah no one other question i have i just thought about because we started and we said like oh how being outdoors is good for you right being at the beach and being at the sea and in the park are there cases or specific situations where that may have a different different effect you know like the people are getting stressed or you know it's not good for them in the activity i think it depends on the person like i lived for a time i lived for a very short period in Oban in mm -hmm. scotland and it's really 
gateway to the highlands, middle of nowhere. Mm. And for me, that was too remote. You know, it was, wow. too, yeah, it was, it was really quiet. That's interesting. And I, I like, so I wouldn't like to live in the city centre, mm -hmm. but I like being close to the city. Right, right. I like to go on holidays to, you know, all around the country. Mm -hmm. um, I love Ireland and I like West Cork would be my, uh, of the 30 counties I've, I've stayed in, West Cork is absolutely my favourite because every corner you go around, there's the sea, there's the rocks, there's the hills and mm -hmm. it's kind of next stop America. The vastness of the ocean is just extraordinary, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I I, lo I love going holiday, but day to day life, I love being in. You know, I love being close to the city centre. Yeah, I I get it. I the, uh, the reason I asked that question is because we said like a, you know sea and being on the beach is so kind of calming, and then I pictured, you know, like a stormy weather, like a yeah. violent wind and and that's sometimes not that relaxing so that's where was my thought and the other thing i heard that there's um there are certain types of winds that are coming down the mountains and as they're coming down the mountains they're generating certain frequency of the noise that mm -hmm. is not you know you can't hear it it's outside mm -hmm. of our range of hearing yeah but it influences very badly our bodies and our brains and can cause depression and various things. Okay. Yeah. So so there was there was a study and I don't don't remember that now because I, I read like a number of years ago um, about one particular type of wind that was generating noise about I don't think it was like seven hertz or something like that. Uh -huh. And then they kind of like correlated uh, number of suicides among uh highland people who are living there with uh, you know how how much in any given year the, those winds were blowing and there was like a staggering correlation and then it's like well because this is like a sound generated and just people feel bad they don't know what's happening but they, they feel bad so it's like whoa that's wow it. yeah that's fascinating yeah so the impact that the nature has yes and it does, you know, like I think, you know, when we had the beast from the east and yeah. Storm Emma, there's where technology was so handy because Twitter was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, the community, you didn't need to go on the, on the news. You went on to Twitter to see what was happening because everyone was tweeting what, what was going on. Yeah. And there was help, you know, there, there was help. And there was such a community spirit mm -hmm. of everyone kind of supporting each other. Yeah. I think we last about 10, 10, about 10 days. But in the late mm. 60s, I think it was, or 50, late 60s, there was a really bad winter and it yeah. lasted from like just before Christmas Eve to the middle of March. Wow. Yeah. In the 60s? In the 60s. Wow. I think it was in the 60s. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The 66 or 68. So a lot of people remembered it. So yeah, there was this amazing, I thought it was just amazing that the spirit and the, the communication and support there was in communities. Yeah. Another question that just, that just, just comes to my mind. Do you think that the, the weather in Ireland or specifically lack of sun, although you live in Dublin, so you have much more sun than yeah, people in do. Kerry and yeah, in Donegal. Yeah. Um, so let's say about people in Kerry and Donegal. Do you think that that also has an impact on, you know, in, in general people, mental health? and their 100%. So oh. there is a condition called seasonal affective disorder. There's also the opposite. There's a summer depression as well. I don't know that much about it. But seasonal affective is disorder, the amount of serotonin. So serotonin helps us go to sleep at night. So when it gets dark, as it mm. does in the winter, then, you know, our brains basically saying go to sleep because there's not enough sunlight and our vitamin D, we get our vitamin D from the sun. So that has a huge impact. So I know I have seasonal affective disorder myself. I was diagnosed in Aberdeen with it and I have a, I have a light box that I use for it. And if anyone has any questions, just, just send me a message about how it helps. But when I was in Aberdeen, it got dark at like half three in the afternoon. Yeah. It was a lot drier there. And I know in Dublin, compared, say, to Belfast, yeah. there is no comparison. Yeah. The amount of rain that, that we have, say, in Belfast, 
Dublin yeah, can be because uh, it's much, much further north. Yeah, but Dublin is amazing. So between Aberdeen and Dublin in the winter, there is a full half hour sunlight. Yes. Yes. So that has a huge impact. Or even people who are living like like in in Norway in the north Norway or yeah. like that's that's you know like in Scandinavian countries I I think they they have a major problem with with suicide and depression yeah. and this is because in some parts of essentially half of the year you have like a two hours of the sunlight yeah. and that's it and then yeah. it's dark. And it is it you know so it's like your world is kind of caving yeah. in on you it's getting yeah. really small and and very claustrophobic yeah. and if you're stressed and anxious it is amplified yes so much because you're going <gasps> everything you're, that we said th- in the beginning of yeah. the uh, of the show yeah and yes and plus this the, how to how to combat how to help help yourself in, in so a situation most, uh, like that well, other than just go somewhere where there's a lot of sun and yeah, hot right? and get, and get a top up um so the most important thing is uh, your attitude to it and that's <laughs> easy for me to say it's really difficult and find ways of reducing your stress and anxiety of learning yourself that's where i come in as a therapist um right. but light therapy in, and light therapy doesn't work for everyone. There's different types so, of light so therapy. So, sorry, Jeffrey, before we go to the light therapy, because I've heard, so you you really said, I, I, I know what I understood. You said like your attitude, right? Yeah. So, is is can that be? And I'm and I'm presuming the answer is no, but I'm telling you what I heard. So, is the attitude is is do you mean like, man, toughen up? No. No. So please, please can so you explain that? So our brains cannot tell the difference between what is real, a thought, if it's a fact or if it's not a fact. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the way our brains work. Is that So we think something, our brains will think that's real. So for example, for myself, when I had, well, before I was diagnosed, um, I hated it in November with a passion you know so and i was i was anxious as well so i was getting even more uptight so mm, okay so it was like a surf perpetuating yeah it was surf. a self perpet pre- i can't say that word uh it was a cycle so yeah so if you say to yourself okay i know in the winter i'm not going to be able i will not going to have the same amount of energy that I have in this summer. And that's okay. And it's okay that I don't have that level of energy. And you shouldn't because it, it goes in the na- rhythm of the nature. Yeah. So it's about saying to yourself, well, I might need nine hours of sleep. Yeah. Or ten. That's okay. You pr- probably do because we need more sleep in the winter. Yeah. So it's okay. Vitamin D, get your vitamin D levels checked. You know, I my vitamin D levels were really low for quite a while. Mm. Um, and taking vitamin D has a huge impact. Get out in the sunlight, you know, briefly um, as well. But, yeah, it's, there are the things, but it's all about our perception and, and acknowledging to ourselves and acceptance. Yes, I do have this. Yes, I don't have the same amount of energy. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. That's a that's a that's a most important part, right? Yeah. Kind of a, listen, and where where is a where is a boundary, or where is it? You know, it's okay attitude versus well, it's not okay. I need to you know be more disciplined and you know get after it more. Because sometimes it's, you know, it's, and I think it's difficult and I know that the answer is like everybody is different. There's no <laughs> one answer. Um, but I kind of want to inquire your, your, yeah. your, your point of view on, on, you know, between or, you know, um, let's give an example. You have a person who, you know, drags out of bed at eight and it's late at work, and it's like low level of energy. And where is, uh, or how to tell whether it's okay, it's winter, you have a less level of energy, versus you better get your discipline checked. You know, get out of bed early and don't be late to work. 
and kind of have a like a therapeut therapeutical aspect of that thing and then like having you know Depression. Sat satisfaction from overcoming that that way versus oh it's okay i just need to you know where how how to make sure that you're not doing the wrong thing to either run yourself to the ground or just allow yourself to slack and that's you know every your your life will go downhill essentially so i i think what you're saying is what's the difference between keeping a normal life and kind of mental health where where say depression is coming in so i think families your friends so if you're or even activities so if you're notice that yourself that like, oh, i can't be bothered going out you're kind of not socializing the same there's mm -hmm. changes in your behavior um you're eating more you know you're eating comfort foods you know mm -hmm. chocolate mm -hmm. wh whatever that comfort food mm -hmm. is but it's your family that, and your friends that are going to notice or you can't be, you know you're meant to go out with your friends it's like i can't be bothered right. but it doesn't last a weekend it lasts longer it mm -hmm. lasts a couple of weeks and you're just totally fed up but you can't get yourself moving out of that yeah that's that's when you're really needing to get help and support you know that there's something going on here right you right. know so if it's going on for a couple of weeks and you just you can't lift that mood and you're thinking you know something's not and you're knowing yourself there's something not quite right yeah, yeah. You know, that's really important. It's important. Grunya, is there anything else you wanna you wanna touch on today? I don't think so. I think we we'll, we've we, covered a lot, but yeah, getting outdoors is really important, you know. It is really important for our physical and our mental health. Yeah. Our holistic health, because one doesn't go without the other, do you know, yeah. it's important. And even if it's you know, I know not everyone is able to get out you mm -hmm. know and go walking or whatever but even going for a drive in the country mm -hmm. yes uh, or being by the you yes. know you know open your windows down just pull your windows down yeah and even if it's winter you know you know what i what i do sometimes i just put a heating to max uh -huh. and pull the window down so you gotta hold it and you can still <laughs> yeah and the sea like the sea i there's times that you know when it, obviously when it's safe but it could be really windy and the car is getting kind of, you're sitting there and the car is rocking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Gronia, before we, sh we wrap this show up, uh, listen, how to get in touch with you and how people can get to get in touch with you and, uh, you know, take it maybe further and, and, you know, talk to you. So the website is probably the best place. It has my contact details, contact form, etc., And it's www.hereforyou.ie. So it's h e r e f o r y o u here for you dot i e i'm on facebook i'm i'm on twitter um yeah but that that's the main way of people to get in touch with me and i will ask them you know i don't if somebody sends me information i will talk to you before you come to see me because i need to make sure that i'm the right person for you you yeah. know it's yeah. not straightforward you know we have to you have to feel comfortable with the person you're going to therapy because yeah. therapy's hard work Yes. Really amazing it has yeah. changed my life. Right. Um and living in Dublin has changed being close to the sea has changed my life as well. But yeah, that's the main way. One one thing one thing people can be sure is that you you you're gonna send them outdoors or at least you're gonna suggest they go out. Yeah. And I couldn't agree more with that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely makes a huge difference to us all being outdoors. Gronia, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And that was another episode of Tommy's Outdoors Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Outdoors Podcast. Like us on Facebook at Tommy's Outdoors. Follow us on Instagram at Tommy's Outdoors. And also, don't forget to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, people, YouTube channel. Tommy's Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, and obviously subscribe on any and all podcasting platforms to never miss an episode again. And uh, that's it. Until the next time, bye-bye.